In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Before I get into what happened in this episode, stop over to mindpumpstore.com. It's a brand new apparel website that we have. So if you want to get Mind Pump gear, mm. shirts, get some fresh clothes. Gear. If you want to get uh, workout stuff, we got on there as well. It's mindpumpstore.com. Also, if you go to mindpumpstore.com and use the code podcast15, that's the word podcast and the number 15 without a space, you get 15% off the entire store, everything on there today only. Okay, so let me tell you what happened in this episode. By the way, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com if you want to fast forward to your favorite part. We open up with the intro portion. This is where we talk about our lives and current events. And we start out by talking about my pre-birth preparation. Not me personally, hmm. uh, but my wife. We're, well, thankfully. We're almost we there. weird in here. Baby's coming. Then we talked about a show on Netflix, a scary show. I'm trying to convince Adam, the scaredy cat, to watch it. It's called <laughs> The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix. It's really fun. Uh, then we talk about a show on Disney Plus called The Right Stuff. I talk about sea turtle eggs and how people are catching poachers. Uh, I talk about how entrepreneurship is exploding in today's COVID world, which is good news. Yeah. Uh, Adam told us a story about eating out. Uh, I talked about using red light therapy to help with my elbow pain. By the way, if you want to use red light therapy to help with pain or improve the appearance of your skin or even help you regrow hair on your head. By the way, this is all scientifically it's proven. proven. I'm not making this stuff up. You want to use the Juve light. It's the best one out on the market. It's the one that uses the lights that are found in studies. They're not the cheapo ones that just turn everything red. They actually work. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Go to juve.com. That's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash Mind Pump to get the Mind Pump hookup. Uh, then we talk about the injury, uh, Dak Prescott's injury. That was gnarly. I wish, oh. Justin, I wish Ad, uh, Doug didn't pull that up on the TV screen. Yeah, that was a hard one to watch. I talk about a study on Alzheimer's and fructose. They call it type 3 diabetes. Uh, we talked about the World Health Organization now recommending that we stop the lockdowns. Uh, we talk about a pumpkin spice muffins made with Organifi Gold Juice. Organifi Gold Juice is great. And for love. stress reduction, it's uh, low in sugar, actually almost no sugar. And there's a recipe to make amazing cupcakes with this stuff. In fact, you can find the cupcake recipe uh, in the show notes at mindpumppodcast.com. But if you want to check out Organifi's products and get 20% off, go to organifi.com forward slash mindpump. That's O R G A N I F I.com forward slash mindpump. And then use the code mindpump for that discount. Then we talked about the NBA Finals and their crashing ratings. I talked about a, another study showing that magic mushrooms uh, has some interesting effects on people. Mm. Um, and then we got into the questions. Then we started answering fitness questions. Here's the first one. Uh, this person says, look, if everything is perfect, your diet and your training, how bad would have it getting bad sleep uh, be for your body? So if you did everything right except got bad sleep, what does that mean in terms of results? The next question, this person wants to know what the deal is with arching the back and the bench press. They've observed power lifters who have these high arches. Yeah, what's the deal? What's the deal there? Um, the next question, this person wants to know why we've talked about fasting for bulking in the past. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah, it sounds crazy. But we explain it all in that part of the episode. And then the last question, this person wants to know how they can fix muscle knots. They've got some tension and some tightness. They want to know how to solve that problem. In that part of the episode, we mentioned one of our webinars for mobility. It's a free webinar. You can learn some good mobility movements for the upper body, lower body, and the low back. Uh, you can find that at primeprowebinar.com. Also, before the episode starts, this month, our two most popular workout programs, MAPS Anabolic, a full body muscle building, metabolism boosting program, and our no BS six pack formula, which is just designed to build the muscles of your core. We've taken both programs, combined them together. $59.95 gives you full access forever to both programs. That is a $174 value for only $59.95. And by the way, both programs, you can follow for a full month risk-free. If you don't like them, if they don't build muscle, if you're not getting stronger, if you're not getting great results, return it for a full refund. What are you waiting for? You can get access to this October special at mapsoctober.com. That's M-A-P-S October. 
Com. You said you wanted something for your 40. What did you want? You wanted to shoot machine guns out of a helicopter? Or yeah, like that? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's over that's, Texas, right? Is yeah. that still what you want to do? Yeah, no, I do want to do that. that I do. Be epic. Just, I think that would be cool. Yeah. It would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. But maybe it's not. Maybe it, fe- it looks cool, but maybe it's kind of like. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. No, I don't think. How it could it not be cool? Yeah, I don't. I think shooting a gun out of a helicopter without even hitting pigs would be cool. <laughs> Just Much shooting less, the grass. Yeah, just because. Yeah, right. Just shooting out of a helicopter sounds cool. You period. know it would be cool if they had like old junk cars, like yeah. junkyard cars just out, you know what I mean? And you just circle yeah. around it. Just I feel like I'd have to have that song playing the whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is that, Apocalypse Now? Apocalypse Now, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. that was good stuff. Just just spraying. Oh, so nice. Dude, uh, I felt I had some mixed feelings this, uh, this weekend. Oh, well, yeah. is this going to turn into a therapy session? No, no, it's oh. kind of interesting. So, uh, well, the j- countdown begins for you guys. It you're, does. You're, so, oh, yeah. You're like in the final Shoot. final week here. It's the final countdown. I thought it was going to be this weekend. I'm going to be honest with well, you. Well, so so she's at Jessica's at the point now where she's ready. She's like, let's make this happen. Yeah. yeah. So she's like coming on to me hella strong this weekend. I'm like, oh, cool. Because I always like that, right? So I'm like, all right. Sure. And then I realize it's because she wants to trigger things. So I'm uh, like, it does help. Are you that. using I've me? Heard. Yeah. Are you using my body for this? <laughs> Did you guys know that that the that the prostaglandins in semen can trigger labor in women? I mean, I've I've where heard did you hear that? Uh, midwife, just, really? Yeah, and I, I looked it up. It's true. Yeah, like, Se- sex and then uh, sex will do it, and also um, it has nothing to semen. do with you poking something up inside yeah. her. <laughs> I feel like that has more to do with it. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. Well, both of those. I mean, that's yeah. just there's like a really? crude yeah. thing. Yeah, that I think happens. it's I think yeah, it's, it's more like, that than the other thing. No, no it's both. It's really? both. Yeah, I looked it up. So, so here's some theories let's I have. Hear, to, so, so like science. relaxes things or what? So we were talking about this, and I'm like, that's interesting. Why would that trigger labor? You know, uh, sex and uh, semen. Sal sex puts you to sleep. Mm, yeah, uh, hey, it's you know. what? <laughs> it's the opposite. It's of kind me. of a good. Th- I don't know. Well, yeah. Justin said it relaxes you. So <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it sometime. Go to sleep. Yeah. No, what what ha- Here's my theory. Right, my theory is since we you know did most of our evolution without modern medicine and you know safety and all that stuff that the woman's body knowing that there's a another person there mm. is more likely to go into labor because that other that partner can be there to protect her and maybe provide food so if she's having sex obviously the partner likes her so the body mm. feels more safe to have the baby that's my theory Interesting. Uh, what do you guys theory. think? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't about know. That. Yeah. You think it has to do with just the poking around? Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> a little bit of a plunging. Because isn't I don't don't they, I mean, <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't that a strategy Sorry, like I'm to go like on a bumpy honest. road, like taking a, a pregnant lady, like when it's uh, coming up on the final final hours, and you're trying to get her to to, to, to jump into labor? You take them take them around, and you, you know, and like like a bumpy road or whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I dangerous. have noticed that the, there's this bit of like a, a, a resurgence of horniness, like towards the end. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that was both your guys' experience. Yeah, I, don't rem- I don't remember. I'm trying to think. She was back waking now. me up at like four in the morning and stuff. I'm just like, yeah. wow, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, dude. Jessica's like that. I can't remember if we were. Sorry, honey. Yeah, Katrina's yeah. get mad that <laughs> I'm I didn't. embarrassing you. I know, yeah. right? We're just yeah. throwing it all out yeah. there. It's all love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all it's all love stuff. Mm. So, anyway. are you, is your is your pool inflated? I mean, are you are you ready to roll? Right. Or yeah, yeah, we're set. What's the house look like right now? We're set. We got the we have the inflatable birthing pool. So I already blew it up just to see if it was all good. Do you let your kids weigh your water weigh in, in right now or what? Nobody goes in there. Oh, that's that's, that's just for baby. Oh, mom, yeah. mom and baby. And then I got Sal's the, got a snorkel ready. Do you I, put do you put <laughs> do you put water in it yet or you wait? No, you wait, dude. The water's supposed to be warm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh so I have the the nozzle attachment to the to the shower head because you have to get the hose to fill it up. I got the drop cloths. <laughs> they recommended drop cloths for the floor and the bed. Uh, a bunch of towels. What else? Yeah, you're gonna need a lot of those. Is that yeah. all set up? Snacks. Is, the, is your whole house look like a like a hospital room right now? No, no, it's just just to blow up. To, just well, you know baby. this, dude. Labor is is not like a, like oh my god, we're gonna have a baby, and five minutes later we have a baby. Right, right. There's time 
So once that starts happening, I'll get things. Yeah, but part of the reason why there's time is because I'm driving to a hospital that's completely set up for a baby. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, oh, I got time to set everything up. You yeah. Have a, you have a playlist and all that, you know, music wise. No, oh, but yeah. Have you thought about I that? No, I, I, that's where I got screwed. And so, yeah. yeah. Really? Well, because it was playing the playlist that I was supposed to play, but then it jumped and did Christmas music. And she <laughs> almost punched me in the face. <laughs> what? Yeah, dude. You guys had a playlist? Yeah, I had a playlist. And I was like trying to play it and in the, scrambling. In to, the room? Yeah, I brought it with me. Oh, no way. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Sure. Yeah, we well, talked about it, everything. I'll, I'll put Rage Against the Machine. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets me going. See yeah. how that goes over for no, you. I, I don't, you can, hey, you my phone even, failed me on that. You're not that even though. allowed to play that during your workout. Don't act like you're going to get to play that <laughs> for her. <laughs> this guy, I'll play Rage Against the Machine. Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> of course allowed, not. You're not even allowed Maybe to play it for your Maybe that's the time you finally get to play. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want my baby born to Rage Against the Machine. Comes out just fist up like, yeah. This kid's pissed off all the time. No, that's a good that's a good tip. I might do that. No, you know what we did? We have this... Uh, we have all these quotes and sayings that her friends and family and my daughter oh, and that's nice. have written and we've strung them all up. And so it's like this string of sayings. So like my daughter, I forgot what she said, but she said something like, um, trust your body, you're strong, you can do this. And so it's all these from p different people in our family. So that's uh, one thing that oh, we did. That's great. Oh, that's cute. That I think is pretty cool. But mm -hmm. I like the playlist idea. Yeah, yeah, just just ahead of time. That way it'll be money. You, you know, know what you on, guys love. Yeah. You got to put it on a loop though, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, what yeah. were the songs that, that uh, Courtney had? Um, I mean, it was obviously pretty chill. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> like Jack Johnson and, you know. Some, Incubus. Yeah, you can piss in, like all the 90s hits, you know? No, she actually does like a lot of grunge, like me too, but uh, more of the mellow stuff, you know, that uh, I'm trying to think of other ones, but mainly just like, you know, your, your real chill kind of surf music. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I have a good idea. Hey, uh, uh, watch the new show on Netflix. Adam, I'm going to convince you to watch this. Oh, I got one. I got a show for you guys too. No, I'm going to convince you to watch this because I know you're, how big of a of a, of a a wimp you are with scary stuff. Oh, well, then come on then. I'm going to watch it. Listen, dude, it's time to- it's time Do to, you have a good one, dude? I want to watch something scary. You got to be- it's time to be a big boy. It has nothing to do with that. It just doesn't- It does. It doesn't interest me. It's embarrassing. Me. It doesn't- My, my co-host is scared of It doesn't stuff. interest me to Listen like to intentionally me. make yeah. myself have anxiety. Why yeah. would- like, That's why? the part that there's tons of anxiety in the, this like world today. Like I need to couch, sit down and watch yeah. a fucking two-hour concentrated version of it. That's face missing. your fears. It's a show. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go ahead. That's so embarrassing. Go All ahead. right, listen. Yeah. Anyway, it's not like super. It is. It is scary, but it's it's because it's good writing. It's not like jump out, uh, uh, grotesque. Like, is it like that house uh, on the hill or whatever? Or? Uh, oh, haunting at. Okay, so it's haunting the same at writer the, at the hill. Yeah, same writer. Oh, sweet. It's, uh, haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, I saw the preview. Of the dude, oh, yes, it's dude. Good. I dude, I loved that last series. That yes, they did. So if it's anything like that, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm pumped. It is. You'll like it, Adam. It's actually really good writing. And yes, it's creepy and there's some scary stuff but it's not it's low anxiety i think it's good entry it's point low anxiety it's a good <laughs> it's a good entry point for children and adam so yeah so if covid and the riots weren't stressing you out yeah. enough like just throw this in the mix why, yeah. why not yeah <laughs> bro i've already given you haven't watched the playbook i told you to watch that i have a better one i watched you. it uh, did you watch it i did yeah oh, over good. the weekend it was oh, great it really good right really good yeah, yeah that was doc I, rivers and uh yeah i watched like uh, two episodes so. i got another one that you guys will really like i didn't so check this out so i'm on uh disney plus and so far I've been a little disappointed Justin I know you brought this up too like man I was really hoping Disney would like just like fire a lot more like series out like, yeah, yeah. To, they definitely. did the Mandalorian and that was it yeah no, they just been they've quiet. had a handful of ones but nothing like nothing like nothing like Mandalorian like exactly. I was hoping you were hoping to get like at least one or two of those every month I haven't got that exactly so um you know they own National Geographic right so National Geographic and Disney made a series it's called The Right Stuff, and it's based off of the Mercury 7, so like the mm. first astronauts ever. Oh, wow. wow. It's really good. Oh, wow. You got the it's, right stuff. it's definitely, Baby. it's got Disney esque as far as like the production value of it, the actors, like the actresses that are in it. It's really, really good. Oh, and then cool. it, it's all based on a true story. But obviously, there's it's you know, reenacted, so it's got act. It's People do not; they have zero today, especially kids that are younger or whatever, have zero idea the risk and the bravery. Yes, it mm -hmm. took to be a freaking astronaut back then. By the way, I, I was talking to Jessica about this because there was another there was another series on Netflix about astronauts, and it spurred a great conversation. And I was talking to her, I'm like, "Do you know what it takes to be an astronaut?" 
You are literally a superhuman. Yeah, you're like a rocket scientist. Yeah, not only are you like physically on a whole nother level, like yeah. a fighter pilot where you can just handle crazy, you know, G's and you you can you can operate under in, intense pressure like a drag car racer, like all that kind of stuff. But you also are some of the smartest people in the world. So you have yeah. to have all that into one person right. mm -hmm. to become an astronaut. But especially and then crazy enough to know that you may die. That was it. Yeah. Was a big risk. Yeah, like a very high possibility that. You yeah, got. dude. Oh, the most yeah un like uh, inviting environment you could possibly put yourself in. So oh, I'm totally crazy. I'm totally unfamiliar with like the Mercury Seven. Are you guys from? I like I'm terrible when it comes to history, and so that's why I think I'm enjoying this so much because I knew very little. Like this, it talks about how even the word astronauts became oh, a wow. thing. Like, yeah, yeah, no, this, I'm not uh, very. Yeah, so it's a really, really, really interesting story how it how it all became, and so it's on, and it's it releases I think every Friday. Friday and there's two episodes, so it's just recently, two weeks ago, it, it launched and it started. So you can watch two of them. Well, there's the another episodes. one too, actually, on on National uh, Geographic, where they they go over like all the ancient Egypt latest findings. And so, like, I was wondering about that. I'm like, you never hear about like any archaeological finds as of late. Is this it, more alien stuff? No, this is all like uh, okay. like uh, tombs that they just uncovered and more uh, people that they've been able to trace back in history that has relevance. In, in ancient Egypt, and right. it's it's really cool that like lots of brand new findings that you don't you know it, it's not like big news anymore because of everything else. Oh, that's so, right. I'll check yeah, that it's out. Cool. Speaking of National Geographic, I was on this site uh, reading like odd news, which uh, you know what uh, I tell you what if you're stressed out by current events, just Google weird news. It's, it's great. It's yeah, totally. It's still news. It's one but of my it's, favorite things. It's to do. not stressful news. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't know this, but apparently there's this big problem with. Uh, in some countries with poachers who who uh, will take because because turtle eggs are a delicacy mm. in some parts of the world and sea turtles are endangered in many parts of the world and so they're trying to figure out a way how do we stop these poachers from taking sea turtle eggs and then because they go for a high price because they're considered a delicacy like what do we do so they came up with a brilliant idea huh. mm. they made fake sea turtle eggs and they put GPS trackers in them <laughs> and they're catching poachers with these fake eggs. Dude. Oh, wow. How man. great is Brilliant. that? So they're stealing the eggs, right, to go sell them. Now they have GPS tracker. Boom, they locate these poachers or whatever. No way. Take them down. That is. I that, read that. I thought that was so that is so smart, right? Man, yeah. That, I mean, that whole market is so crazy, dude. The, the, I forget. Like, I was reading into that because of, uh, you know, what happened with all, like, the Wuhan, you know, stuff and, like, the wet markets and all that. Like, that, that – industry that black market industry is still just thriving right now oh like, dude with all these exotic animals like for trade especially uh for um virility or libido or you know yang energy yeah like any exotic animal's penis you can find it's, that's like the main thing everybody that, wants to gobble up those uh, exotic animal penises that's 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 true what? like if, it, if the more exact exotic the animal is like you know albino white tiger you know you know, penis yeah. powder. Right. They'll sell it for like ten thousand dollars an ounce. Really? Or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? That's yeah. hilarious. Yes. Well, a lot of it's medicine, crazy. a lot of ancient medicine, some of it, it's based on the look of the herb or the the food. Mm -hmm. And if it looks like a part of the human body, then they'll say that that's what helps. So, like rhinoceros horn, it looks because it's a phallic looking thing. Yeah. This is supposed to be good for, you know, penis health too. Right. So, you know, herbs or animals. You eat or, the actual organ that you're trying to. Exactly. Yeah. And, and some of it's interesting. Some of it actually has some supporting science. For example, if you eat heart, it's high in CoQ10, which your heart doesn't eat a lot of. But some of it's bullshit. Like yeah. you know, eating tiger dick isn't going to make you. <laughs> it's not going to get. It's you not going to give you a tiger dick. High noon. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Speaking yeah. of thriving markets, you get. You know what's crushing right now is uh, the delivery for places like Target, Home Depot. Did you know that? Like, uh, so obviously when the, everything shut down originally, everybody's getting crushed. But I I saw some article that like there's like a seventy percent increase in sales because of the you know uh, pickup so and hmm. they're trying to rival right now i think this is like amazon week i don't know maybe doug can check this for me there's like a this is like the popular week on amazon i think coming up this week where they amazon does like a i forget what they call it prime week yes prime. thank you prime week it's like two days or something yeah it's coming up right i think it's i think it's this week or mm -hmm. the, the following week 
And so these stores are all gearing up to to rival it. And I guess they're just putting a lot of advertising and marketing around the being able to go to the store because there's a lot of consumers that, I mean, and even Prime. Prime takes the next day where if I want something from Best Buy or Target and I want it right now, I can just drive down to the store. And the worst part about going to the store is not the actual getting this price, going into the store, finding the product, getting yeah. in line, mm -hmm. waiting in line, paying for it. Where all that's cut out now, and they just come straight out to the uh, straight out to your car and give it to you. Oh, I see. So and you, so it's you actually, drive out to the car and they bring it right out to you. Yeah, and that's so, exploding. Right, so, and there, oh. and there's a, a lot of companies started to do this as a way to work around the whole huh. COVID situation. But what they're finding is that there's a huge increase, uh, and they're seeing like profits go through the roof right now because more and more people are shopping this way. They feel and, more comfortable with that. Yeah. And so. so I'm I'm well not only comfortable, I think it's just more convenient. Yeah. I mean, there's been many times where I buy something online because I simply don't want to go down on a Friday and you know after late afternoon or evening when I know everybody or a Saturday. Especially if you don't need it right now. Right. Like it's like oh, I want it right now, but I don't want it so bad that I'm gonna go in the store or wait in a line, crowds, all that bullshit. So I think COVID just exposed all that. And so people had to, you know, had to yeah, pivot give me another option. And give yeah, people an option. But now people are getting comfortable with it, figuring out that all these stores are doing it now, and mm. it's may become the way that we do business in I, the future. I, 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 I 100% feel like Interesting. the future of retail businesses totally going to change. Totally. Like you're going to have to be like warehouses instead. Warehouses yeah. and showrooms. Yeah. Like if you want to yeah, go and, and look and touch a product, which I'm, and there's still always going to be a market for that, right? Because you can look at something online, but it's always a 2D image. And that's fine for a lot of things, but sometimes you want to go and look at it yourself. So I feel like there's going to be showrooms where yeah. you go and you can look at things, but mostly, like you said, warehouses. You yeah, park the car. Yeah, I wonder too. Like uh, I, I went to Chipotle to, uh, you know, do the thing where normally they they'll do like two people in at one time and you can kind of go through. But they've totally cut that out now, where it's just you have to order ahead of time and go pick and it then up. go pick it up. They don't do any of the, uh, you know, standing there and like telling them what to put in it anymore. Dude, oh, it's okay. everything's going to change. Like yeah. that's what I think it's going to be like. Did you it's guys? Totally like that. Did you guys know that? Speaking of market pressures, Wall Street Journal did an analysis and found that entrepreneurship rates um, have spiked more than they have in a decade. That because, makes a lot of sense. Yes. So many people are starting new businesses and trying to innovate and find ways to support themselves because so many other businesses are- Dude, this could be like a birth of a new renaissance. It, oh, you know what? This is what I love about the, 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 the you know spirit of people, especially when they're allowed to do this, you mm -hmm. know? Is that when there's a some kind of a, a market pressure, they innovate and find different ways to you know to support themselves, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't expect that, but I mean it makes sense. Well, yeah, and I I look at it too is like we're so in the hustle of everything and like trying to do the nine to five thing that a lot of people just don't take that time to be creative anymore. They don't allow their mind to to really think about like other ways to improve other aspects of their life or you know their business, whatever they're doing. And I think that this is definitely this forced shutdown has has you know provided a lot of that for people. Oh, they probably oh, wouldn't have in, had. in our space, I think it's gonna. I mean, it already is. You know how many trainers I talk to who have completely moved over to virtual training. Mm -hmm. And then there's other trainers that they like working with people in person. And they, of course, they, they're not, they weren't training in gyms anymore because a lot of them, even though a lot of them are open now, their business is just tanked. And so a lot of them are doing private, small group training. Yeah. They're going to people's houses. So, you know, the, the, the demand for fitness is there, just like the demand for services and food and products are still there. But these new pressures are just changing the way it's going to completely yeah. look. And Ka Katrina and I went to a restaurant last night, or I mean Friday night for the first time. So <clears throat> we decided to go out have a date night or whatever, and we went to one of our one of our favorite like really nice restaurants. I was a little disappointed, you know. I think I because I you know the restaurant in uh, industry right now is getting crushed totally. And you know they've and a lot of places at least here in California they've they've found a way to with with the nice weather still. Uh, they have opened up basically the same. It looks like, and maybe I'm off a little bit, but it looks like about the same amount of tables that they would be mm -hmm. serving uh, inside. Only they're they're serving them outside. But they they all they all have like things where like there was an option for me to give an additional tip that is to just save the staff on there, which I thought that was cool that they had that. But I was telling Katrina where we're, first of all we get there for our uh, reservations. And it's all outside, so it's a little clunky, like the systems. And so, I mean, I'm under, I understand, and so I'm patient, whatever. But they were they were late on getting our reservations, and why? And we were standing outside uh, on the sidewalk, 
And I thought, you know, it's really interesting that they that somebody hasn't came over and like offered a chair or offered something to us. And we were talking about this at dinner time because uh, we love this place and the food's amazing. And and I was talking to her about how they have this where they're offering, you know, or you have the ability to offer, you know, or put money towards helping save the staff. But I'm like, you know, if if I own that place, I said, and this is a Friday night, so Friday and Saturday night have to be some of your busiest nights for restaurants. I, as an owner, I'd be out there like thanking the people that are still coming during a time like this. Mm -hmm. I would be like over delivering on customer service because I know I, I don't know what's gonna where we're gonna be in the next three to six months. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting that they had they didn't do any that I didn't get any of that. Now I had a great waiter, it was great. We tipped him really well, and that was fine, but. The, as far as the ownership of it, I thought that it, it could have been better. And that was my first experience of going out. I kind of expected that. I thought I, if as a business owner my, uh, myself, I know in a time like this, like, man, when you are back against the wall, this is where you start going above and beyond totally, with, with right. all these services. And I didn't get that at all. Totally. Yeah. I mean, the, there's there's restaurants out there like that and, and the owner's very visible, but yeah, there are, it's, it's totally like you, you see who is, you know, fully adapting and really appreciative of the business coming back and all that versus the ones that just kind of are making it work. You mm, know, yeah. it's totally a big difference. Do, do you take, um, do you take your son uh, to dinner or is this just you and no, it's just Katrina and I, have you guys gone to restaurants with him yet? Not during COVID okay. before that though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How is it? He's good. He's so easy. I mean, as long as my, he's just coming off of being sick right now, right? So he's such a chill little boy. He is. Yeah. Like, what, that's a it, testament to you guys, I think. It, you know, it was a week of, we had about a week of a cold there, right? Where he, he had a, a fever for the first day or two. He broke it and then he had a really bad cold where his nose was running like crazy. And so we had about a week of him being really crabby and needy. And for a minute there, like Katrina, and like, oh my God, is he like going through a phase right now? And it was just, he wasn't feeling good. Like, so the last two days, he's been feeling 100% again. And it's like, oh God, thank God our son is back. He's back to he's so chill. He's like he's he he doesn't cry, he doesn't fuss, he's so playful. We take him in public places, he's chill like that. Like he's just got a he's got a really cool demeanor to him. We could take him in, you know, we were in here this weekend. He loves to be in here when we're working out. You know, we can just let him go and he just How's he do with um strangers? Is he at the point now where he doesn't because for a second, their kids are like, they'll go with anybody, and then they go through a phase where they don't want to yeah, go Yeah, so he's at that phase right now where he won't just go with anybody. Like, so he 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 went through that phase where anybody could grab him and hold him and kiss him and play with him, and yeah. like, you know, he was just, he was very well, he would receive anybody. Now he's definitely more aware of like who mommy and daddy is, and when we go up new places, new environments, he's a little more like looking around who is everybody what's going on and so if you're somebody who comes up even like family who like his is uh you know his grandma and grandpa like they they're around him uh, quite a bit and even when they haven't seen him for like a week and they first come over and they go reaching for him right away he kind of like he'll step closer to me and watch them and observe them for a while <laughs> before he'll just go into their arms so mm. he's definitely going through that phase right and he's going through this phase with me uh, i think i mentioned this already on the show where he uh, is like really, really attached to me. Like he wants even going to bed now because Katrina has like her routine of things that, that we each have things that we do most of the time, but we both switch back and forth. But she handles a lot of the, you know, right after I get done reading with him after bath time, she normally puts him down for for the, uh, for bed. But lately, like he he doesn't want to leave me to go to bed, and so just me taking him to go to bed, he's been really, really, really good. So mm -hmm. he's going through a phase wanting to be around dad. Are you are you starting to see his personality start to <clears throat> you know develop? Little or? things. So the first thing that we've noticed right now, this is like, and this is a, a question like where her and I are always like, what do you think? Is it coming? Are we seeing parts of ourselves in him? She's like, she mentioned something the other day. Well, this is definitely you. Your this is your son is like this. He does not like to be fucked with when he first wakes up. So like. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina's learned that like because he normally if he's been sleeping all night long or for a two hour nap or whatever and she gets you know the first thing that I think most parents do right away is you change your kid's diaper right he's probably peed himself through the time yeah. he's sleeping he don't want to you can't do that like if you do that he start he just gets fucking pissed yeah let him wake up yeah he needs to like you wake him a up. little coffee yeah he needs to wake up for about a, a half hour or yeah. so of like kind of like chill you know and he'll just kind of cuddle next to you and sit there and relax and talk and play with him a little bit but you you can tell he's got like it takes about a half hour to an hour for him to make that shift of I'm awake to like fully Dude, awake one to play that's with. That's my that's my my whole house is like yeah. that. I yeah. I'm not like that at all. You guys know me. I wake up and I'm <laughs> uh, I'm happy. You're I'm, ready to go. I'm ready to you know yeah. ready to talk loud and hug and have a great time. 
Nobody in my house is like that. Yeah. Jessica, my daughter, and my son all wake up angry. <laughs> they all just wake up in a bad mood. Maybe it's not that they're all angry. It's that you're else. like that, and yeah. they're just want to be a slow and quiet. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, they, it's, they always yeah, seem yeah, angry because yeah. you're annoying the fuck out it's of them. Probably, Why is everybody so angry? <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like my daughter will wake up, and I'll go over to like kiss her. Oh, wake up! It's like uh, stop, get away from me. Yeah. You're right. I think you're right. He's I think like it's he, an, I pissed him off. Yeah, he, he's he's like me, where he just wants to like you know quietly wake him up for like you can't you don't want to put the lights right too like if you because we he sleeps in pitch black so. If you swing open the door and it's hella bright outside and it hits him in the face, he's like, Ugh. "Really? <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah, don't like see, it." I'm the opposite, <laughs> dude. Uh, I had a great experience with uh, the red light therapy this weekend. So you guys know how I've been. If you guys have been seeing me stretch my my hand out a lot while while we're talking, yeah, what's going on with so it? So my uh, it's the golfer's elbow is what it's called. I don't golf, but that's the name of uh, of the issue. Oh, the so it's irony on the, there, right? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got sports ball injury. Yeah. So yeah. the inside of my elbow has been really sore, and I heard it a little while ago helping my. My father-in-law move. I had my hand up like this on a heavy couch and it kind of strained a little bit. And I could feel it like pop a little bit. So I know it's coming from one of my forearm flexors, but it hurts if I press or pull. And so finally I'm like, you know what? I need to do something to, besides stretching and mobility, which is helping, let's do the red light therapy. Uh, so I put my elbow up against it and it's close to the surface because you know your elbow, there's not much tissue there. So I know the red light penetrates deep enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's see how big of a difference it makes. One session, huge difference. Wow. Really? Huge difference. Yeah. So I did 20 minutes on my arm and then right away I went to move it and it felt significantly better. I've only done it once. So I'm going to do it a few days in a row. And see how big of a Maybe difference. Maybe that'll help with Adam and my, uh, my uh, uh, old man groans. Oh, you know, with our hips and everything. <laughs> What's going on yeah. with that? Hey, dude, I can hear. I can hear uh, Adam coming in. I uh, just sometimes I think step, dude. I think I just train myself to do that. I don't know why I do that. Sometimes yeah. bro, you are so I in do the denial. same things. So I am in denial. I'm, I'm in denial. No, you're in bro, denial, bro. Speaking of injuries, dude, did you oh, see yeah. this weekend, Dak Prescott? Man, I did. I watched the the, the highlight of that. Oh, Brilliant. how nasty is Football. that? This whole. Thing like foot just turned, turned, the turned around, bro. Oh, turned around. Awful, the, oh, it was one of the nastiest injuries I'd seen. What do you do? You got hit. He's been playing great yeah. too. Huh? Yeah, dude. I mean, so check this out. So they were, they, he did not sign a, a, a long-term deal. They were Ugh. going back and forth. They did what's called a franchise tag, which basically is like a, like a, a parking spot for him right on the team. And so he got paid this year. He got like 31 million or something like that. So he got a massive check for this year, but now he has nothing next year lined up, and so and then you go down with an injury like this, like that's oh a, you're screwed. Yeah, this yeah. is a, this is a year long plus recovery for sure. For I him. was gonna say, did they project like how long they haven't? Take? They haven't yet. Like this all happened yesterday, yeah. right? So we don't know. We don't know how. I mean, it was like emergency. Surgery. I mean, obviously it, his foot was turned all the way around, so yeah. it's a very serious it's, injury, it's very right? Bad. Like you don't you don't see that. Uh, that's not like a rolled ankle. <laughs> you know, oh so, no. yeah, he definitely just. Snap! I can't watch stuff like that on video. Yeah, I, I have a hard time. Do you too. guys remember? Yeah, I forgot who. I forgot who it was. It might have been Anderson Silva when he went to throw a leg kick and the guy checked his leg and it yeah. folded in half. Yes, his yeah. leg snapped in half. Like it was <laughs> Look at Doug's face. Dude. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. Uh, Doug, take that down. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, uh, I don't know how people don't get hurt every time they get hit. You know, these guys are so massive and fast and strong. I feel like uh, it's a miracle every time you don't get hit. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Inevitably, like, yeah, you get like, and it's usually something that just twists you up a little bit, and it just looks like a regular play, and then you, they come up and their whole legs facing the opposite uh, direction or uh, something. And you're like, ah, oh, God. Hey, yeah, so brutal. A, a, a study came out, another study to support the the theory that Alzheimer's is maybe a condition that is caused by your brain's inability to utilize uh, sugar, glucose, fructose, uh, and and many scientists call Alzheimer's type three diabetes, right? Mm. And again, uh, to to support that, when you put someone who's who has Alzheimer's on a ketogenic diet you tend to see improvements in cognition yeah. because then the brain starts to use ketones. So a study comes out, um, another study, this was, this was published in the Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience, and it, they show that Alzheimer's disease may be driven by the overactivation of fructose mm. uh, made in the brain. So uh, just more evidence to suggest that it's probably better, number one, you don't overeat because mm. overeating will cause uh, can cause problems with sugar no matter what. But then number two... 
probably not a good idea to eat a diet that is super high. What is the yeah, th- what is the theory on why that's happening? Is it because you're just you're the overconsumption of sugar for so many years, and then your your body just kind of downregulates yeah. how much it utilizes, and then therefore it starts to process? And the I mean, what's well, the science the, the, behind the process why? by which the body utilizes sugar for energy is different than the way it utilizes like ketones for energy. And people will argue that ketones is a cleaner burning fuel. It doesn't cause as much byproduct. doesn't excite the neurons as much mm. in the brain. So it may be this over uh, excitability in the brain over time that causes some of this damage. And I mean, okay, mm. if we, again, if we use the evolutionary hypothesis, humans probably alternated between yeah. e- utilizing sugar and being in ketosis because there's no way we had food every single day. Well, biologically, we have, we're have we set up to, to utilize both fuel sources. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting to me that uh, if, if you do notice, there's a lot of people in their diet, they never change their diet. So it's always, you know, very heavily, uh, you know, accessible sugar. And mm-hmm. they're always like consuming it. And it, to me, it just, I don't know, it, even if it's not in your family, you know, it's not something that like genetically is something that you may be susceptible to. I, I, th- I would think it's a good idea at least to Dude, change it up. Totally. So I, for me personally, I've gotten to the point where I can feel in my body when it's time to switch to a totally different uh, fuel source or mm-hmm. type of diet. So you guys will know I'll go I'll go into a ketogenic diet and I'll do that for a few months and then I'll bump up my carbs again and I'll notice the benefits of that. And I notice when I switch over to ketosis is when I start to notice I'm less sharp. I start to notice like energy fluctuations throughout the day. I feel a little less sharp. So then I'll go into a ketogenic diet. I think it's probably a good idea for most people to to at least fluctuate, you know what I mean? At right. least for periods of time, go through diets that force your body to use different forms of I've energy. I've always wanted, you know New what I've stimulus. always wanted to do that we sh- and we've ne- I don't think collectively, maybe one of you guys have done this. For sure we've never done it all together is do a diet where we we run it through the seasons, right? So we we mirror what would be in season during that time. You'd be ketogenic in the winter. Right. He's always talking to me about that. Yeah, I've always on that. I've always wanted to try that and just see what happens. No, I, I think I, I I do it. Uh, you know, um, unintentionally, right? So just like you, Sal, I'll go on kicks where all of a sudden I'll go super low carbohydrate. I'll in, in bump my fats up. Like then other times I'll go extremely low protein even for a little bit. Like so, I like I manipulate my diet all the time, but I've never tried to like follow the seasons and mm-hmm. be consistent like okay these three months it's going to be all a keto diet because mm-hmm. we're in winter time and then come around spring yeah, nature we'll- does a, a great job of providing you nutrients and vitamins and things you need for you know if, if i'm not getting enough sun you right. know if i'm not if it's colder weather if it's like all these different variables like if you go to nature like it's changed for a reason yeah like organ meats or you know uh like cod liver for example uh, you, you eat cod liver you get a lot of vitamin d and that is how people yeah in uh, the the higher latitude Nordic, countries, Nordic yeah. countries, that's how they were able to prevent uh, a lot of the issues that would happen to Europeans when the sun would go down, when, when the, the sun wasn't as out. Right. They would get rickets and you know mental disorders because they weren't getting the vitamin D. Speaking of which, winter's coming. We still have COVID. We have the flu. And I'm so surprised you didn't jump all over. I know. That. I, I, know. I, 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 I held I, back. I, you, I was so ready for <laughs> you, know, to you jump guys on. in your stupid uh, show. <laughs> I, I like You're like, not allowed to quote yeah. what, what you were adamantly against. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying a statement. So, but uh, more Denarius forever. Yeah, that's right. more <laughs> and more and more studies are showing that having adequate vitamin D levels dramatically reduces severe symptoms of COVID-19 and other uh, diseases, including the flu. And there's a lot of scientists that think one of the main reasons why in the winter severe side effects or symptoms of these diseases goes up is because people aren't getting as much sun. Yeah. And so supplementing with vitamin D is probably a smart thing. I would get it tested first, but keep them yeah, in adequate in levels. The yeah, for sure. Especially Speaking of that, how have you not brought up the who? What do you mean? What do you mean? What oh, do I what do you mean? Yeah. What do I mean? W-H-O. I thought, yeah. I thought you meant the uh, the, the band. band. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 World Health Organization just came out and said uh, to world governments, um, do not use lockdowns as your primary means of preventing the spread what? of COVID because it's causing other problems, uh, especially poverty. It's increasing yeah. poverty in people who are 
most susceptible to you know the risks of poverty. Yeah, but my politician knows a lot more. Than you. I know, dude. Yeah. They need to they need to chill with that. Did you see? I, I looked up some stats. You want to hear something crazy? Mm. So these are real statistics on because again we think of health. We're so myopic, right? Like you know, if you're in fitness, health is all about being lean and muscular. If you're in you know whatever field, health only means health is a lot of different things. It's not just are we gonna are people gonna get COVID. Right. It's also mental health. It's mm-hmm. it's other mm-hmm. aspects of health. So check this out. Right. Being economically crippled. Yeah. So since uh, lockdowns have happened, there's been a forty percent increase in reported mental or behavioral health 40% issues. Forty percent increase. Wow. There is a thirteen percent increase in uh, substance use. So people who started or who have increased substance use. There's a 10% increase in suicide. There is a 30% increase in anxiety and depression, or people who've had anxiety and depression, mm-hmm. and a 26% increase in people who say they're experiencing trauma or stress. Nobody considers that yeah. when they do the lockdown. They look at, oh, less people have COVID, totally worth it. You got to figure all this in. And so this is what the WHO was talking about. So they're saying, hey, you know, there are other ways to prevent the spread, and we can't rely on lockdowns because of the all these unintended consequences. Now, after they came yeah, out with that, that, do you see, are any states responding to that or doing anything different? I mean, I know that just came out a couple of days ago, but what are we seeing in response to that? Um, I think it's too early. Not California. Yeah, I haven't seen anything yet in terms of, you know, what's going on. <clears> so no. I, I foresee, I'll tell you what, um, you know, I've t- we've talked about this before on the show, that your lifestyle, your training, your diet – uh, should match the context of kind of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And if this, if you fall into any of those categories I just talked about where you're noticing increased stress, increased anxiety, uh, looping thoughts, fears, all that kind of stuff, you should definitely, my recommendation, if I was your trainer, I would train you in a way to help you with that kind of stuff. So exercise would be- right. More recu- therapeutic. Therapeutic, recuperative. Food would be less about getting you shredded and more about providing your body with Nutrients that like help. pumpkin spice muffins, yeah. things like that. Well, mm. oh, you know what? Along those lines, <laughs> supplements. There are a lot of supplements out there that can help with stress and anxiety, or help your body handle stress. Like uh, you just talked about one of the recipes that we uh, that we use the Organifi Gold Juice to make the those those muffins. Yeah, yeah. really good. But the Gold Juice, uh, Organifi's Gold Juice, does all the compounds in there are for stress to help your body deal with stress. So that would be a supplement that I would recommend now if you're falling in that category, yeah. other than like stimulants and stuff that are going to hype that you was, up. That has been my favorite recipe that Jerry's made so far. That was amazing. It was so spongy and delicious. Yeah, yeah. it tasted like- yeah. um, however, She nailed it, however. And the yeah. sugar is low. Yeah. yeah. It's low in sugar because the, the gold juice doesn't, well, was it monk tons fruit of flavor, and, and stevia? Yeah. That's so the thing good. about organified. It's just they, they've mastered the way to, you know, put it all in there, but still make it tasty. Totally. Which totally. I don't know how they did that. Hey, so what happened? The, so I don't watch basketball, obviously, but I did see an article that the NBA finals just saw 70, like crazy crash in ratings. Did you guys, did you watch? No, you know, I'm not watching <laughs> right now. So why you, 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 why still you start that fight? Dude? It's an <laughs> asterisk, <laughs> right? I, I think we came <laughs> up with that. Conclusion. Yeah, yeah. No, well, you know what did happen? Who won? Lakers? So, yeah, Lakers Lakers. Won. Okay. Lakers won in Game Six against the Heat. Uh, I, I mean, I'm following the news on it, but I'm not watching. I'm not watching the game. And if, every time this comment comes up on the damn show, you flood you flood my fucking DM. So, so, <laughs> so, so I, I just wanted to sabotage. Yeah, you know, because I I mean, I have half and a half, right? So I have half the people that I, I think understand uh, where I'm coming from. That I have the other half that you know is whatever about it, right? That well, you're if you're a real sports fan, you watch anyways. I'm like, no, nah, that's not really how it works. Um, I mean, you, Sal, used to talk about this on the show a lot, and I, I really appreciate when you when we have this conversation that one of the best ways that we can vote is with our dollar, yeah. right? And uh, so, not spending any money on the NBA or one of the ways that they make uh, their money is by viewership. You uh-huh. know, how many people are tuning in is how they will get the advertising dollars, and is one of the easiest ways that I can vote. I'm not a fan of. You know, yelling about it, screaming about it, bitching about it, pointing fingers about it, saying rah, rah, and barking about it. It's just, hey, I'm uh, as much as I love to watch the NBA. I'm gonna, you know, check myself out this season. I don't care for how they're doing a lot of things. And the truth is, I'm not alone. I'm not al- not only am I not alone, but there is a massive millions of people that feel the same way. And just last week, I believe it was on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, the uh, commissioner released a uh, press conference in response to their ratings being so down, and they're changing a lot of things that will happen next season. That's it. The yeah. market spoke. Market is spoken. <clears throat> yeah, and that's what drives it. I, I wish people understood that. Like you, if you don't like something, it, you, you know, use your actions and your money 
um, to show your feelings. And if enough people do it, the, the yeah. market has to respond. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. It's, oh, you yeah, know why? Like, because you spend money every day. You only mm -hmm. vote a couple times a year. Right. Uh, but you spend money every single day. And at the end of the day, and I, and I hate, I hate you know, this will probably stir some more shit up too, is that, you know, everybody that thinks all these big companies really give a fuck about all the social shit they do not no they are trying they are pandering to people trying to find ways to make more money and when they try to and it doesn't work out they fucking pivot again mm -hmm. so that's a perfect example of what we're seeing right now like everybody was like oh the nba is so amazing they care so much oh they do do they because all of a sudden the ratings went down by oh 50 and now they're going to pivot back the other direction yeah they so, made it they made right. a decision and it, it turned out to be a one that didn't work for them yeah, uh, market yeah. wise hey um speaking of which uh interesting study came out on psilocybin so psilocybin is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms mm -hmm. uh now i follow this very closely because it's i it's find it fascinating i love alternative medicines um and uh, i also follow it now closely because there's a company called compass pathways that recently went public that is probably going to be the first company to sell medicine actual medicine that's that uses for therapy right? psilocybin yeah. for therapy so a study comes out that shows that psilocybin, there's tons of studies now that show that it can help with PTSD, depression, mm -hmm. um, with uh, chronic pain in some people. CTE maybe even? Uh, maybe. maybe. Um, the depression it, one is crazy. Like they'll, they'll have one therapy session with clinically relevant and doses. 80% gone. And not only gone, gone for a long time. That's crazy. Yeah, one th uh, session, gone. You know what else they're finding? Hmm. That psilocybin therapy, uh, the, some of the side effects, because they always look at like effects, side effects, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the side effects, increased uh, spirituality. Um, mm. In fact, they found that atheists uh, were much more likely to convert to believing in a god if they had psilocybin therapy. So that wasn't even the goal. They'd go and get the therapy for depression or whatever. Yeah come out of it, and not only would the depression be better, but then they'd believe in God and totally change their beliefs. Also changes their politics. What? Yes, they're less, far less likely to vote for authoritarian uh, government. Mm. So when they come out, they want less you know, authoritarian, authoritarian type politicians or people is telling there, you- Is there such a thing? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what politics are not authoritarian right Well, you're now? right, but, <laughs> but well, well, I mean, this is the way I look at it. It's- uh, And what does that look like? Small government, right? L more freedom for people, small government. Like, let me do my thing, leave right. me alone. Um, and that's how it kind of comes across. So, but it' very interesting, right? How it, it, it not only change it helps these other oh, things, yeah. but the side effects well, are. They speculate a lot of religions came out of people consuming uh, psychedelic uh, yep. types of, of things like magic mushrooms. And uh, I was listening to a few podcasts. And again, this is where like Graham Hancock and like this other guy that uh, was on Joe Rogan as of late, Brian, I forget his last name. Um, but they were they were talking about like the history of all that and Eleusis. I think is how you pronounce that, but it, it was in Greece where people from all over the world would come there for this this knowledge, yeah. and uh, you know it was some kind of an, an elixir they would make with uh, lots of different herbs and you know like psychedelic uh, types of uh, you know like mushrooms and things with that, and they would leave and they'd have this epiphany and they would come up with like ideas about democracy and uh, you, you know Socrates and you know all these uh, great. Um, philosophers like came out of that so yeah. it's interesting i believe it i i, I mean I, I i can't imagine being uh you know a human thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago where i mean the stuff we take for granted now like written language very abstract like each letter represents a sound and then you combine them and you make words like we think of it now as this logical form of communication right very abstract and crazy whoever came up with that right so it makes sense that you have a bunch of you know cavemen you know for lack of a better term going around you know hunting killing things they don't even have a concept of the afterlife you just die and you're gone mm -hmm. and then you know a hunter gatherer probably a woman because they were probably more likely to be gathering picked something up tested it to see is this edible because we're starving yeah. and all of a sudden push you know? yeah. How Holy many people shit. died eating things just yeah, out of no. an experiment? Yeah, right. you know oh, that I mean? didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, that one. You looked at cow shit, yeah. and they're like, "Wait a minute, I should probably eat that mushroom." Yeah, and that and, shit. Right well, there. dude, if you're starving, I think you start looking at everything <laughs> right, as right. a possible food source. I guess you know? so. Oh, yeah. First question is from Fit Vic. If your training, diet, and programming are all pretty close to being 100, percent 
How negative of an impact does only sleeping six hours, five days a week have on making muscle gains? <laughs> Such a hard question. I to know. Answer. You, you know. You know. Twenty two percent. Yeah. Actually. So I'm I'm going to change the last part because there's a little bit of an individual variance with with appropriate uh, you know levels of sleep or optimal levels of sleep. Believe it or not, there are people, very small percentage of people, who do well on less sleep than other people. But it is a very small percentage. Vast majority of people need about. Anywhere, roughly eight hours of sleep. But let's just change the question. Let's say workout, diet, you know, everything's perfect, but you're not getting a good sleep. Your sleep is, let's say, 25% less than you need. How much of an impact will that have? Massive. Mm -hmm. Tremendous impact. You are severely hampering your body's ability to adapt, build muscle. It doesn't want to burn body fat. It doesn't want to get rid of its insurance policy against stress. Your hormones are definitely going to be out of whack. In men, this means testosterone levels are going to plummet. In women, your progesterone, estrogen levels are all over the place. Yeah. Um, insulin insensitivity happens. Um, you can uh, sleep is it's it's up there with food and water. That's where all the building and repairing and restoring that that's where that that all happens. So like to just uh, you know focus on like breaking the body down, implementing the stress. Like you need that recovery process to really get you to then adapt and and get stronger. I feel like this person knows the answer better than we do, though. I mean, to because there is such an individual variance here, and I don't. And if I don't know, maybe this is enough sleep for this person. And if you're doing everything else, like they say, a hundred percent, and you're not at your fitness goals, or you're not where you want to be, then obviously sleep is making a huge difference, yeah. and that could be the difference maker in you getting to your results. Now. If you're in incredible shape and you feel amazing and you just hear us talk about the benefits of sleep and you know you could get more and you're not, it may not be as crucial to you. It may not be that as big of a deal. It, it, could it make a difference? Yeah, it can make a difference. And what percentage of that or how much it could be limiting? You would probably know better than anybody else because if you're oh, yeah. doing everything at 100%, and the only thing you're missing on- You don't need on, any affirmation if you if it's working. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like if he's if this person is in incredible shape, they feel amazing, and they're just not getting eight hours of sleep every single night, and then they're asking that question, you're probably okay, dude. You're probably doing just fine. But yeah. if you're asking this question, you're doing everything 100% but the sleep, and you're still not where you want to be as far as your peak fitness or mental clarity or strength, and you're still- trying to pursue a goal and you're not there, well, this could be the key that unlocks yeah, that. Boy, this is something that my opinion and perception changed on radically as I became a more experienced trainer. Um, you know, I would, when I was younger, I didn't think this made, this was a big deal. Uh, then again, I was living on, you know, ephedra, caffeine, you know, yeah. supplements, and yeah. I was also in my 20s. Um, but, uh, you know, I, with clients, I can, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I saw sleep make Profound differences in my clients. I have, I had men that I, that would get their hormone levels checked, and all they did was get more sleep, and you'd see a thirty percent increase in testosterone. I had clients who whose bodies stubbornly held on to body fat, even, and we had to be very careful with cutting too many calories, and are we doing the right amount of cardio and lifting weights, and what's happening? And then all of a sudden they sleep right, and then the fat falls off their body, you know, at least in comparison to how they Do you they think this before. is an age thing? Do you think that there's mm. a, a point where if this becomes far more crucial for us? you think that's part of why this is well, coming? yeah, because we're solidified in our routines. Right. Uh, you know, I, th I feel like we're a little bit more trying to figure out what the routine's going to be when we're younger and we're trying to, like, put it all together. Uh, but, yeah, we just get, like, really hardwired. And I go to work. I'm under, you know, uh, these fluorescent lights all day. Uh, I, I just kind of get into that pattern where I don't really change as much. And so, then it's like really crucial that you have these implemented habits that you establish that like allow you to uh, gain benefits like sleep. I just always, I'm always playing that game, right? Of, you know, if I would have pieced this together when I was 20, would I have made huge gains or would I have made a huge difference? Or was I just so resilient at that point in my life mm -hmm. that I was able to make the same kind of gains and still get by with not doing all these things. Like I always wonder that, like, yeah. and am I more aware today because, because I'm more aware and right. I'm actually more in tune with my body. Yeah. Was I always having those terrible shits? Was I always having those terrible <laughs> nights of no sleep? And like, was it really hindering my gains or am I just so aware of it today? Or yeah. is it what now that I'm older? all really that in a row? Of, you know, what yeah. if all of it was aligned up and, and you were aware of all that when you're younger? Like I'm sure the gains would have been substantial. Dude, I think it makes a huge difference. Look at diet. You know, um, I mean, Adam, you've in the past before you competed, you did 
cycles of gear and you trained and you ate and you didn't accomplish anywhere near the physique you did right. when you were older and you didn't use nearly as much uh, anabolic steroids and it right. was all because your diet uh, and your training were different. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it makes a big difference. And here's the other part. When you were younger, I don't know about you guys, but this is true for me. When I was younger, I had less uh, responsibilities at home. So although I slept five mm -hmm. hours a night when I was working on my day off, I slept a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that with kids. Yeah, and no, now, that's a good point. That's a good point. you know, I remember that back that's then. That's a good point. There's, yeah. There was many Saturdays or Sundays because I went so hard in the paint for three or four days in the straight that I could just, oh, I'm just going to sleep all Sunday. I slept a lot and I was in the sun a lot. I felt like I got yeah. better sleep when I was out, you know, and active in the sun. It just made my deep sleep happen more often. Yeah, you just can't take naps and sleep in <laughs> when yeah, you're you older and you have kids, you know? I got time for that shit. Next question is from Hudak on health what's the deal regarding arching the back during the bench press i personally can't arch my back that much but i see some people with serious arches when be benching is it a big benefit there's two two things here one there's the natural arch that's good for good form yeah, and the powerlifting arch. and then there's the powerlifting arch that is utilized to maximize leverage uh, for the bench press okay so let's start with the natural arch a natural arch on the bench means if you lay down flat on a bench with your feet flat on the floor, your low back should not touch the bench. You should have this little bit of arch in your back. And you can exaggerate it a little bit. And what this does is it allows you to pull the shoulder blades back and down, protect the shoulders, hit the utilize better leverage, better mechanics, uh, reduce your risk of injury. So that's a, a better way to bench press. You don't want your back totally flat. You want your butt on the bench, but you don't want your lower back flat on the bench that throws the shoulders forward, tends to bring the shoulder blades out and round them forward and can cause problems. Now, with power lifters, they, the rules in powerlifting say that the upper back and the hips or the glutes need to touch the bench. So what power lifters do is they exaggerate the arch so much to reduce the range of motion. So with a super big arch, you don't need to bring the bar back down as much on a bench, and you can lift more weight. You don't need to do that kind of an arch. In fact, uh, the average lifter doesn't know how to do that properly. If they overarch, yeah. they could cause problems. You're, problem. you're really just uh, emulating a decline bench press. I mean, that's all they're doing. If you looked at the angle that a power lifter is doing on a flat bench, you look at the 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 angle that they create with that arch that they create. It's just like a d they shorten the range of motion up. They mm -hmm. they've got their hips up in the air or their but their butt, even though their butt has to be on the thing with, on the bench. But they they are really just creating that same same angle as you would on a decline. Which everyone anyone who's done a decline bench knows that a decline bench is a lot easier than a flat bench. So it makes a lot of sense for a power lifter who's trying to increase their weight that they're lifting to create as much yeah. leverage as possible. It's just less length. You got to press it up off your chest. Yeah, you know if if you want to. <laughs> Like simplify it to to that point, but yeah, it's they they do that like literally as a technique uh, for them to be able to uh, lift heavy weight, but also like not have to press it so far up. Now that now that being said, there is something to learn from powerlifters. I feel like I got much better at bench pressing when I started to lift like a powerlifter, though instead of a bodybuilder, right? So. You know, I came from the the kind of bodybuilding mentality first, which was the flare the elbows out, only come down to 90 degrees. And I got so much more out of my bench press when I stopped lifting like a bodybuilder and I started trying to lift like a power lifter. I was able to increase my bench press. I never felt the pain in my shoulders. Like I used to get pain in my shoulders a lot when I had bench press when mm -hmm. I was lifting like a bodybuilder. Because technique is so important for a power lifter, their mechanics on the bench press are are really good. And when you're trying, it's less about the arch and it's more about exaggerating the retracting and depressing of the shoulders, right? Yeah. So think about the upper back, even though you can't see what's really going on with someone's shirt on and they're on the bench, all we see is this massive arch. So everybody looks at the arch in the back and goes like, oh my God, that looks like it's so dangerous or that's so bad. What you don't realize, the main thing that's causing that arch is that person is really retracting the shoulders back and depressing them and that's causing this excessive arch. And the retraction, the depression of the shoulders is what's so important right. in a bench press to protect the shoulders, to get the most out of your bench, to be able to take it to full range of motion. So there's some, there's a lot to learn 
about bench press technique from a power lifter from that yeah. standpoint. It's anchoring your shoulders in place. Yeah. It's very stable to, to do that. And also uh, that just slight arch even uh, really helps to then provide leg drive too. So now I can focus on, uh, you know, getting that kind of tension to go all the way distributed, you know, from the top of my body down through my feet, which adds even more of, of availability to uh, increase my force production. Not to mention that so many people think that it's so dangerous because they see it in any, almost any other exercise that we talk about, like a major, like if you had an excessive arch and a deadlift or a squat, it would oh, be yeah, like, bad. oh my God, or an overhead press. Oh my God, bad, yeah. bad, 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 so bad. But what you, you got to understand wh where you're resisting the weight and where, where the gravitational forces are really at. It's nowhere near the lower back. No, it's on the shoulders. No. Yeah. Yeah, the no, weight is pushing down yeah, on your shoulders. Down. It's yeah. not pushing down your spine. Yeah, so there's really not that much risk injury-wise. Because so, And the reason why I bring that up, because as a young trainer, I didn't know better. Okay, and I used to see people that were trying to be power lifters or lifting like that, and I and clients would ask me, they'd be like, "What are they doing?" I'm like, oh, they don't know what the fuck they're, they're, they're doing. Cheating. They're, yeah. Well, yeah, they're exactly they're cheating just to get the weight up, and that's they're dangerous. Hurt themselves. Yeah, they're gonna hurt themselves. Like I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, I didn't under, I didn't fully understand what was going on, and so. You know, I would tell clients like, don't you don't ever want to you know bench press that way, and that's bad or that's dangerous or whatever. But the truth is, there it, there's not a lot of risk in the low back like that. Um, but you're not thinking about the arch. So now, if you're a listener and you hear me saying like that, that's not bad. Don't go into the bench press trying to arch the low back. It's yeah. all about the retraction and depression of the upper back, the shoulders that you're yeah. peeling back. That's what creates yeah, I, that. Arch. I would say stick the chest out and pull the shoulders back yeah. rather than think about the arch. Right. Yeah. 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 Next question is from MJ Kane, 1414. Adam has said he's had success with fasting to increase appetite for a bulk. Can you provide some details on this? I'm glad you picked this, Justin, because I, I posted this on my story uh, last week. Somebody asked this question and I said, I, it sounds contradicting to do this. Yeah, fasting yeah. for bulking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And but, you're probably one of the only coaches that have even mentioned this. Right. And so this was, I had a lot of success with this. Um, what I noticed from practicing fra fasting is, you know, man, uh, you know, you, you have the first like 12 to 16 hours that's really hard to resist food. And then you kind of get past that and it's like to get to 24, from 16 to 24 is not as hard as zero to, to 16 in my opinion. And then after that, you'd be like, okay, I'm fine without food. And then the next day you eat for the first time. And the first meal, it's kind of a small meal because you hadn't eaten for a while. But then after that, my appetite would like just, it would kick back up where I was really hungry again. What I found was when I was constantly trying to gain, right? And I felt this a lot when uh, I was competing for the shows because I was trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every off season which means I had to increase my calorie intake. When you're putting on the amount of muscle mass that I was I was putting on for a show, you're having to constantly increase calories. The workload is going up, which so that requires more fuel. I'm building more muscle, that requires more fuel. So the calories were just creeping up, creeping up. And of course, I had many times where I'm like, "Oh my god, I just can't eat 5,000 calories today. I can't get 5,000 calories today. When I'd have these moments where I'd been, you know, in a bulk for several weeks and just struggling to eat that much food, one of the best things that I would do to interrupt that bulk would be go on a one day fast. And I would do this one day fast. And it took me a long time to get to this place in my, in my career and training because in the past, and I know Sal and I have addressed this before, uh, you know, the young insecure me who was always trying to build and bulk, you know, the scale would go down in a day and I would freak out like, oh my God, I, I lost five pounds of muscle today because the scale went down five pounds. Once I realized that's not how the body works whatsoever, most of that is carbohydrates and water that I'm just holding and calories that's inside my body. The bo m fasting is not going to lose three pounds of muscle off my body in one day. So once I got past all that, I started to use this as a tool in bulk just to interrupt bulking. I'd be bulking for several weeks. It'd get really difficult. I'd throw a single day fast in there, and then I'd go right back into my bulk. It was amazing. This is a great example of knowledge versus wisdom mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to fitness. Okay, Knowledge says skipping meals, not eating protein every day isn't going to be good to pack on muscle, right? If you want to pack on muscle, consistent calories, consistent protein feedings, that's what the studies show, okay? And that's true. That's exactly what the studies show. Here's where wisdom comes into play. When you coach people, when you train people, when you work with a lot of people, 
when you bulk or eat excess calories for long periods of time, you start to hit a wall. Mm-hmm. You start to hit a wall. You start to feel it's like you're, you start to force feed yourself. You don't feel good. Digestive issues start to pop up. And at which case then it becomes more important to focus on that aspect, not the physiological aspect, not the protein and the calories in my body, but rather the psychological aspect, palate fatigue, and my gut health, all of which can become big roadblocks to your muscle building goal. So at that point now, we're going to stop on the feeding. We're going to stop on the giving myself protein every day. And it's like, okay, I'm having trouble feeding myself. I feel like I'm force feeding myself. I need to do something to increase my appetite. I need to do something to improve my gut health. I need to to, to interrupt what's happening right now. And so I'm going to do a fast. So when you hear us talking about that, there's a lot of coaches out there. They're like, oh, those guys are idiots. You shouldn't fast for bulking. Okay, yeah. If Again, if you lack wisdom and you're looking at just the studies, but what Adam's talking about and what he found tremendous success coaching people and himself for, com- for competitions, and when I've worked with people who want to bulk, I found tremendous success in doing this because – it becomes a real problem when you're trying to eat more calories and you, you just don't want to. You don't want to, it doesn't feel good. You got to force yourself to eat. You go ahead and stay down that path and you're going to run to bigger problems. And it doesn't, it's okay. You, you might take a micro step back by fasting for a day or two. And when I say micro, I mean literally micro. You're not losing tons of muscle, you're just not bulking like you were before. But then when you get back on track, you feel better, appetite's back, digestion's better. Now you're full steam ahead. Not only that, but I'll also say something. This is also controversial, but this I, I believe this. Some studies suggest that your body does become desensitized to constant repeated protein feedings. In other words, your body starts to use less of it for muscle and starts to turn more of it into uh, energy uh, to burn. And I believe that fasting increases the sensitivity that your body has to protein just like it does uh, to carbohydrates. Next question is from Lean Queen. How can I alleviate or prevent muscle knots? I get persistent knots on my legs, including on my psoas and the back of my knees, which are very painful to work out. The knots seem to get worse after exercise and better after a hot bath. You know, the what makes a muscle knot or, you know, when you feel someone's massaging you and you feel like a knot and they push on it real hard and then all of a sudden it goes away. Mm -hmm. What causes a knot or what a knot is, there's a little bit of controversy. Um, Yeah, have they come to any conclusion with that? Yeah, my, well, here's the, here's what the, the most common uh, theory is. And that's the one I believe is uh, as well. Uh, Obviously your muscles contract or relax and I, and that's controlled largely by the central nervous system. And I do think that when your body is used in a way that's unbalanced or you're dehydrated, lots of stress, or you have poor mobility, that in order to protect itself, your CNS puts some muscles under a slight, uh, almost like it's sending a small signal to it. And it's putting it under a little bit of uh, a flex. You know, like if your shoulder mobility is poor and you don't have muscles that support your shoulder girdle well, right. your CNS will turn on your upper traps a little bit to stabilize. So then when people come push on your neck, you're like, oh my God, I'm so yeah. tight. Now, why does it feel good to press on it? Because pressing on a muscle, just like stretching a muscle, eventually tells the central nervous system relax. to relax. And then you feel that release. Oh, the knot is totally gone. So massage is good. Foam rolling is good. Not the solution. Those are all temporarily, uh, temporary band-aids. The solution is improve your movement patterns focus on mobility. If you have not been on our MAPS Prime Pro webinar, it's free. Go on there. Uh, Adam teaches it, so you know it's a good job. And you learn good mobility moves for a lot of the body that'll prevent, that'll solve uh, what's causing knots in the first place. Yeah, I wonder too if it's uh, it's a constant repetitive uh, usage sort of a signal too, like where uh, they used to call it overactive there muscles. You go. I was gonna, I was gonna make this statement that I don't think that the science has been wrong on this. I think with the way we have explained it yes. for so many years, yeah. because it, it, I learned it as overactive, underactive muscles. Right, this yeah. is an overactive muscle mm-hmm. to your where you're going right now. Right, yeah, no, and that's so I. I have been paying attention too, and I'm trying to see where they conclude because there is a lot of like debate around all this. But uh, it makes sense to me to that, um, like you're you're producing the signal that I'm I'm doing these 
these patterns over and over and over again. And, and, you know, the body's sort of trying to, to, to warn like, okay, so now there's going to be an instability in another part of your body that we're going to need to address. And this is something that we need to, uh, uh, consider. And so for me, like looking at it as an instability, uh, like how can we mobilize the joint and get everything now to distribute that more effectively? We're, you know, this is taking on too much of, of the work. And so, uh, you may get some relief by then sort of, dampening that signal by adding pressure or, you know, sort of rerouting it by doing different types of, of movements uh, to put uh, a little bit more distribution of that force into other working muscles. So to really like light up and highlight other muscle groups to then, you know, take that balance back to stable the joint properly. Well, let, let's take it to this person. It says it's their psoas they mentioned, right? I think, did I read that yeah. right? Right. So she mentions the psoas, right? So Imagine if you're, and, and, I'm, and you're both right in this, in the way you explain this, right? So I'm with Justin. Like, I, I think that this has always made a lot of sense to me. It's overactive, underactive. It's an overactive muscle. In other words, it, when you go to do a squat, the reason why you probably feel this in the psoas, probably on one side more than the other, there's probably somewhat of a shift in your squat. And it could be the, the slightest bit of movement. It could, and it could be all the way down to your foot. Right, your foot just barely pronates on one side more than the other. This causes some little bit of a shift when you're at the very bottom of your squat. When you have a hundred pounds or more on your on your back and you're doing this for five, six, ten reps, imagine how much more active that psoas has to be on one side versus the other. And so you're sending a signal to the brain like, oh my God, fire, 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 because it's having to take, it's not being balanced out in the body correctly. It's one side's having to fire and work so much more. That's why it feels that way after a workout. And the reason why a massage feels so good, it interrupts that, right? Mm -hmm. There's this, the brain's firing, 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 yeah, firing. It's in a loop. Yeah, it's in this crazy loop because it's like, holy shit, like she's making the side work so much harder than the other side. This isn't right. And so it gets in this state of like tonus of like cramping up feeling. And then you doing pushing on it or getting a massage, it interrupts that communication between the brain and that muscle that's in that state. That's the way I would explain it. The way to improve it is what Sal said is there's obviously some movement pattern that is not ideal and you're not moving optimally. Mm -hmm. So working on good joint mobility, taking the, the muscles through full range of motion without any load on it, just getting, getting good at moving well. And you should, okay, and this is what I love about the Prime Pro webinar that Sal's referencing that I did. If you do that... Okay, so if you've been someone who's lifting consistently, you've actually, you're wise enough to point this out. You notice you've connected the dots every time you squat or do these exercises. You feel it in your hip flexors or you feel it in these areas. Now I challenge you to go through those movements, especially the lower body ones in the Prime Pro webinar. Go through those for a good 15 minutes before you go do your left and get back to me and tell me how much better that feels. Yeah, and you and should feel it the first time. 100%. Yeah. And I'll say this, like this is 100% confident. I, with my clients, I solved 90%, uh, I would say, at least uh, of problems like this, whether it's my neck is tight, uh, I have bursitis in this part of my hip. I have these knots on my IT band whenever I run. I solved a good 90% of people's problems or those issues with mobility and increased hydration. That's it. Those two things right there. Yeah. Hydration's Hydration is another big, big one, by the way. Yeah. If your electrolytes are off and your mm -hmm. hydration is low, your muscles are more likely to be tight. Everybody knows that when you get that cramp feeling. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Just I would just have people track their water. Oh, okay, now you gotta have your drink about a half a gallon of water or a gallon of water every single day, and let's do correctional exercise. And no joke, of that 90% of people that I solved their issues, most of them, it took me a month. Literally, it would take me like a uh, real common one is neck tension. That's a super common one here in Silicon Valley. A lot of people working on, on their computers. And within a month of, you know, working on strengthening the mid back, doing a little shoulder mobility, having them increase their water intake, they were always like, uh, it's gone. It's totally gone. I've had this issue for years. So this is a problem you can fix. You just got to solve it. You got to solve the root cause. And doing massage and foam rolling, stuff like that, it can be a part of the solution, temporary. but it's temporary. It's not really the, the the main thing. And that webinar, again, is primeprowebinar.com, and it's totally free. Uh, I think everybody should go through there and, and try those movements. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram, and we do like to answer DMs. We do our best to answer as many people as we can. You can find Doug, the producer at Mind Pump Doug. 
You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Good stress tends to be meaningful to you when you think back on it. I feel like it, intentional falls in this category too. Like it, you, it, you, you intended to do that. Like right, you go into a trip like that with right. the, the intention to- You're not have, just reacting. Right. You're not just reacting or it's not just happening to you where I feel like when you look at bad stress, bad stress is something normally- 